Sunyata Sanskrit, Pali, Sunyata, pronounced Shunyata, translated into English most often as emptiness and sometimes voidness, is a Buddhist concept which has multiple meanings depending on its doctrinal context. It is either an ontological feature of reality, a meditation state, or a phenomenological analysis of experience. In Theravada Buddhism, sunyata often refers to the non-self Pali, anatta, Sanskrit, anatman nature of the five aggregates of experience and the six sense spheres. Sunyata is also often used to refer to a meditative state or experience. In Mahayana, sunyata refers to the tenet that, "...all things are empty of intrinsic existence and nature svabhava", but may also refer to the Buddha nature teachings and primordial or empty awareness, as in Dzogchen and Shentong. Etymology <inaudible> 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 Sanskrit is usually translated as devoidness, emptiness, hollow, hollowness, voidness. It is the noun form of the adjective sunya or shunya, plus ta. Sunya means zero, nothing, empty, or void. Sunya comes from the root svi, meaning hollow. Ta means ness. Development of the concept The concept of sunyata as emptiness, states Sue Hamilton, is related to the concept of anatta in early Buddhism. Over time, many different philosophical schools or tenet systems Sanskrit, Siddhanta, have developed within Buddhism in an effort to explain the exact philosophical meaning of emptiness. After the Buddha, emptiness was further developed by the Abhidharma schools, Nagarjuna and the Madhyamaka school, an early Mahayana school. Emptiness, positively interpreted, is also an important element of the Buddha nature literature, which played a formative role in the evolution of subsequent Mahayana doctrine and practice. <laughs> early Buddhism <laughs> Pali Nikayas The Pali Canon uses the term emptiness in three ways. One, as a meditative dwelling, two, as an attribute of objects, and three, as a type of awareness release. The Sunya Sutta, part of the Pali Canon, relates that the monk Ananda, Buddha's attendant asked, It is said that the world is empty, the world is empty, Lord. In what respect is it said that the world is empty? Quote, the Buddha replied, in so far as it is empty of a self or of anything pertaining to a self, thus it is said, Ananda, that the world is empty. According to Thanissaro Bhikkhu, Emptiness as a quality of dharmas, in the early canons, means simply that one cannot identify them as one's own self or having anything pertaining to one's own self. Emptiness as a mental state, in the early canons, means a mode of perception in which one neither adds anything to nor takes anything away from what is present, noting simply, there is this. Quote, this mode is achieved through a process of intense concentration, coupled with the insight that notes more and more subtle levels of the presence and absence of disturbance CMN 121. Topic emptiness of dhammas According to Bhikkhu Analayo, the Pali discourses use the adjective sunya with a much higher frequency than the corresponding noun sunyata. This reflects an emphasis on qualifying phenomena as being empty rather than on an abstract state of emptiness in early Buddhism, states Analayo. Topic Meditative state Emptiness as a meditative state is said to be reached when, not attending to any themes, he the bhikkhu, enters and remains in internal emptiness MN 122. This meditative dwelling is developed through the four formless states of meditation or arapajanas and then through themeless concentration of awareness, the Kalasunyata Sutta MN3 and the Mahasunyata Sutta MN3 outline how a monk can dwell in emptiness through a gradual step-by-step -step mental cultivation process, they both stress the importance of the impermanence of mental states and the absence of a self. In the Kamapu Sutta SIV.293, it is explained that a bhikkhu can experience a trance-like contemplation in which perception and feeling cease. 
When he emerges from this state, he recounts three types of contact faso, emptiness sunyato, signless animito, undirected apanahito. The meaning of emptiness as contemplated here is explained at MI.297 and SIV.296-97 as the emancipation of the mind by emptiness sunyatasetovamati, being consequent upon the realization that this world is empty of self or anything pertaining to self sunyam item atina va atanyana va, the term emptiness sunyata is also used in two suttas in the Majjhima Nikaya, in the context of a progression of mental states. The texts refer to each state's emptiness of the one below. Topic Chinese Agamas Some of the Sarvastivadin Agama Sutras extant in Chinese which have emptiness as a theme include Samyukta Agama 335 Paramartha Sunyata Sutra Sutra on Ultimate Emptiness and Samyukta Agama 297 Maha Sunyata Dharma Paryaya Greater Discourse on Emptiness. These sutras have no parallel Pali suttas. These sutras associate emptiness with dependent origination, which shows that this relation of the two terms was already established in pre-Nagarjuna sources. The sutra on great emptiness states, what is the Dharma discourse on great emptiness? It is this, when this exists, that exists, when this arises, that arises, the phrase when this exists, is a common gloss on dependent origination. Sarvastivadin Agamas also speak of a certain emptiness samadhi, samadhi as well as stating that all dharmas are classified as conventional. Moon Keet Chung and Yin Shun have both published studies on the various uses of emptiness in the early Buddhist texts Pali Canon and Chinese Agamas. Chung has also published a collection of translations of Agama Sutras from the Chinese on the topic of emptiness. Topic. Early Buddhist schools in Abhidharma Many of the early Buddhist schools featured sunyata as an important part of their teachings. The Sarvastivadin school's Abhidharma texts like the Dharmaskandapada Sastra, and the later Mahavabhasa also take up the theme of emptiness vis a vis dependent origination as found in the Agamas, schools such as the Mahasamgika Prajnaptivadins as well as many of the Stavira schools except the Pujalavada held that all dharmas were empty dharma sunyata. This can be seen in the early Theravada Abhidhamma texts such as the Patisambhidamaga which also speak of the emptiness of the five aggregates and of Svabhava as being "...empty of essential nature." The Theravada Kathavathu also argues against the idea that emptiness is unconditioned. One of the main themes of Harivarman's Tattvasiddhi Sastra is Dharma Sunyata, the emptiness of phenomena. Theravada. Theravada Buddhists generally take the view espoused in the Pali Canon, that emptiness is merely the not-self nature of the five aggregates as well as a mode of perception which is, "...empty of the presuppositions we usually add to experience to make sense of it," especially that of unchanging selfhood. Therefore, some Theravadan teachers like Thanissaro Bhikkhu hold that emptiness is not so much a metaphysical view, as it is a strategic mode of acting and of seeing the world which leads to liberation. The idea of emptiness as lack of inherent existence has very little to do with what the Buddha himself said about emptiness. His teachings on emptiness, as reported in the earliest Buddhist texts, the Pali Canon, deal directly with actions and their results, with issues of pleasure and pain. To understand and experience emptiness in line with these teachings requires not philosophical sophistication, but a personal integrity willing to admit the actual motivations behind your actions and the actual benefits and harm they cause. Some Theravadins such as David Kalupahana, see Nagarjuna's view of emptiness as compatible with the Pali Canon. In his analysis of the Mulamadhyamakakarika, Kalupahana sees Nagarjuna's argument as rooted in the Kakanagata Sutta which Nagarjuna cites by name. Kalupahana states that Nagarjuna's major goal was to discredit heterodox views of Svabhava own nature held by the Sarvastivadins and establish the non-substantiality of all dharmas. According to Peter Harvey, the Abhidhamma theory of the Theravadins is not based on the kind of svabhava that Nagarjuna was critiquing. They are dhammas because they are upheld by conditions or they are upheld according to their own nature ASL Here own nature would mean characteristic nature, which is not something inherent in a dhamma as a separate ultimate reality, but arise due to the supporting conditions both of other dhammas and previous occurrences of that dhamma. This is of significance as it makes the Mahayana critique of the Sarvastivadin's notion of own nature largely irrelevant to the Theravada. 
Emptiness as an approach to meditation is seen as a state in which one is empty of disturbance. This form of meditation is one in which the meditator becomes concentrated and focuses on the absence or presence of disturbances in their mind. If they find a disturbance, they notice it and allow it drop away. This leads to deeper states of calmness. Emptiness is also seen as a way to look at sense experience that does not identify with the I making and my making process of the mind. As a form of meditation, this is developed by perceiving the six sense spheres and their objects as empty of any self. This leads to a formless jhana of nothingness and a state of equanimity. According to Gil Fransdal, emptiness is as important in the Theravada tradition as it is in the Mahayana. From the earliest times, Theravada Buddhism has viewed emptiness as one of the important doors to liberation. Matthew Kosuta sees the Abhidhamma teachings of the modern Thai teacher Ajahn Sujan Boraharnwanaket as being very similar to the Mahayana emptiness view. Mahayana Buddhism Prajna Paramita Sutras The Prajna Paramita Perfection of Wisdom Sutras taught that all entities, including dharmas, are only conceptual existence or constructs, though we perceive a world of concrete and discrete objects, these objects are empty of the identity imputed by their designated labels. The Heart Sutra, a text from the Prajna Paramita Sutras, articulates this in the following saying in which the five skandhas are said to be empty. Form is emptiness, emptiness is form, emptiness is not separate from form, form is not separate from emptiness, whatever is form is emptiness, whatever is emptiness is form. Madhyamaka Madhyamaka is a Mahayana Buddhist school of philosophy established by the Indian Buddhist philosopher Nagarjuna. In Madhyamaka, to say that an object is empty is synonymous with saying that it is dependently originated, which means, it's affected by the three marks of existence, it is fated to be transient, unsatisfactory, and without inherent existence. Madhyamaka states that impermanent collections of causes and conditions are designated by mere conceptual labels. This also applies to the principle of causality itself, since everything is dependently originated. If unaware of this, things may seem to arise as existence, remain for a time and then subsequently perish. In reality, dependently originated phenomena do not arise as having inherent existence in the first place. Thus both existence and nihilism are ruled out. <laughs> Nagarjuna Madhyamaka is retroactively seen as being founded by the monk Nagarjuna. Nagarjuna's goal was to refute the essentialism of certain Abhidharma schools. His best known work is the Mulamadamakakarika, in which he used the reductio ad absurdum to show the non substantiality of the perceived world. Nagarjuna equates emptiness with dependent origination on the basis of the Buddha's view that all experienced phenomena dharma are dependently arisen. Pratitya Samyupana, Nagarjuna insisted that such phenomena are empty. Sanya. This did not mean that they are not experienced and, therefore, non-existent, only that they are devoid of a permanent and eternal substance svabhava. Since they are experienced elements of existence, they are not mere names In his analysis, any enduring essential nature would prevent the process of dependent origination, or any kind of origination at all. For things would simply always have been, and will always continue to be, without any change. In doing so, he restores the middle way of the Buddha, which had become influenced by absolute tendencies. Utilizing the Buddha's theory of dependent arising, Pratitya Samyupana Nagarjuna demonstrated the futility of these metaphysical speculations. His method of dealing with such metaphysics is referred to as a middle way, Madhyama Pratipad. It is the middle way that avoided the substantialism of the Sarvastivadins as well as the nominalism of the Sautrantikas. Topic: Svatantrika Prasangika distinction. In Tibetan Buddhism, especially in the Gelugpa, a distinction is being made between Svatantrika and Prasangika approaches to reasoning. Svatantrika is attributed primarily to the 6th century Indian scholar Bhavavivaka, who argued for the use of syllogistical statements in the propagation of Madhyamaka, in line with the developing Buddhist logic. It is used in contrast with Prasangika Madhyamaka. 
According to Tsongkhapa, for the Svatantrika conventional phenomena are understood to have a conventional essential existence, but without an ultimately existing essence. The name prasangika is derived from prasanga, or reductio ad absurdum arguments, rather than svatantra anumana, or independent syllogisms. Buddhapalita are regarded as the main proponents of the prasangika, which argues that only arguments should be used which lay bare the logical inconstancies of their opponents. <laughs> Nihilism and eternalism Some non-Buddhist and Buddhist writers state that the sunyata concept in Madhyamaka philosophy is nihilistic. For example, Jackson writes, A nihilistic interpretation of the concept of voidness or of mind only is not, by any means, a merely hypothetical possibility. It consistently was adopted by Buddhism's opponents, wherever the religion spread, nor have Buddhists themselves been immune to it. This view has been challenged by other writers. Some scholars interpret emptiness as described by Nagarjuna as a Buddhist transcendental absolute such as Tathagata, while other scholars consider it a mistake. According to Jorge Ferrer, Nagarjuna presents the middle way, one between nihilism and absolute eternalism, and sunyata as emptiness as the soteriological middle way. Randall Collins states that for Nagarjuna, ultimate reality was shunyata, emptiness. In Nagarjuna's thesis, adds Collins, this emptiness is not a negation, but the premise that no concepts are intelligible. David Kalupahana states that this topic has been debated by ancient and medieval Buddhist metaphysicians, with a divergence of views. Emptiness as a view, adds Kalupahana, but holding up emptiness as an absolute or ultimate truth without reference to that which is empty is the last thing either the Buddha or Nagarjuna would advocate. According to Ferrer, Nagarjuna criticized those whose mind held any positions and beliefs suggesting liberation as avoidance of all views, and explaining emptiness as follows. The victorious ones have announced that emptiness is the relinquishing of all views. Those who are possessed of the view of emptiness are said to be incorrigible. Yogacara Yogacara explains emptiness in an analysis of the way we perceive things. Everything we conceive of is the result of the working of the five skandhas, form, perception, feeling, volition and discrimination. The five skandhas together create consciousness. The things we are conscious of are mere concepts, not das ding and sich or the thing in itself. <laughs> Buddha nature and Yogacara Madhyamaka An influential division of 1st millennium CE Buddhist texts developed the notion of Buddha nature. The Tathagatagarbha doctrine, at its earliest probably appeared about the later part of the 3rd century CE, and is verifiable in Chinese translations of 1st millennium CE. The notion of Buddha nature was opposed within the later Tibetan Gelugpa school, because they imply a self-like concept. Tathagatagarbha Sutras The Tathagatagarbha is the topic of the Tathagatagarbha Sutras, where the title itself means a garbha womb, matrix, seed containing Tathagata Buddha. In the Tathagatagarbha Sutras Sutras the perfection of the wisdom of not-self is stated to be the true self. The ultimate goal of the path is characterized using a range of positive language that had been used in Indian philosophy previously by essentialist philosophers, but which was now transmuted into a new Buddhist vocabulary to describe a being who has successfully completed the Buddhist path. These sutras suggest, states Paul Williams, that all sentient beings contain a tathagata as their essence, core or essential inner nature. The Tathagatagarbha Sutras presents a further developed understanding of emptiness, wherein the Buddha nature, the Buddha and liberation are seen as transcending the realm of emptiness, i.e. of the conditioned and dependently originated phenomena. The Srimala Sutra is one of the earliest texts on Tathagatagarbha thought, composed in 3rd century in South India, according to Brian Brown. It asserted that everyone can potentially attain Buddhahood, and warns against the doctrine of sunyata. The Srimala Sutra posits that the Buddha nature is ultimately identifiable as the supramundane nature of the Buddha, the Garbha is the ground for Buddha nature, this nature is unborn and undying, has ultimate existence, has no beginning nor end, is nondual, and permanent. The text also adds that the Garbha has no self, soul or personality, and 
incomprehensible to anyone distracted by sunyata voidness. Rather it is the support for phenomenal existence. Another seminal text which was and is influential in Tibetan Buddhism is the Ritnagatravabhaga Sutra. It forms the basis of Shentong, a further developed form of Madhyamaka, in which the realization of emptiness is a preliminary stage to realize the nature of mind, the self-reflexive nature of consciousness which shines through when it is freed from the defilements. Moderate Shentong views are still being taught in the Nyingma and Kagyu lineages, despite the fierce resistance and persecution by Gelugpas in previous centuries. Topic. Scholarly opinions While highly influential in Indian and East Asian Buddhism, for Western scholars the Tathagatagarbha doctrine of an essential nature in every living being appears to be confusing, since it seems to be equivalent to a self, which seems to contradict the doctrines in a vast majority of Buddhist texts. Some scholars, however, view such teachings as metaphorical, not to be taken literally. Wayman and Wayman have also disagreed with this literalist view, and they state that the Tathagatagarbha is neither self nor sentient being, nor soul, nor personality. According to some scholars, the Buddha nature which these sutras discuss, does not represent a substantial self. Atman. Rather, it is a positive expression of emptiness, and represents the potentiality to realize Buddhahood through Buddhist practices. In this view, the intention of the teaching of Buddha nature is soteriological rather than theoretical. According to others, the potential of salvation depends on the ontological reality of a salvific, abiding core reality. The Buddha nature, empty of all mutability and error, fully present within all beings. According to Matsumoto Shiro and Hakamaya Noriaki, the idea of an ontological reality of the Buddha nature is an un-Buddhist idea. Their critical Buddhism approach rejects what it calls Datu Vada, substantialist Buddha nature doctrines. Buddhism is based on the principles of no self and causation, which deny any substance underlying the phenomenal world. The idea of Tathagata Garbha, on the contrary, posits a substance namely, Tathagata Garbha as the basis of the phenomenal world. Matsumoto Shiro asserts that Datu Vada is the object that the Buddha criticized in founding Buddhism, and that Buddhism is nothing but unceasing critical activity against any form of Datu Vada. The critical Buddhism approach has, in turn, recently been characterized as operating with a restricted definition of Buddhism. Paul Williams comments, At least some ways of understanding the Tathagatagarbha contravene the teachings of not-self, or the Madhyamika idea of emptiness. And these ways of understanding the Tathagatagarbha were and are widespread in Mahayana Buddhism. Yet by their own self-definition they are Buddhist. Topic. Tibetan Buddhism. Tibetan Buddhism developed five main schools. The Madhyamika philosophy obtained a central position in all the schools, but with two distinct variations. Rangtong, C. Q. Prasangika Madhyamaka, which is taught by the Gelugpa, but also by the Nyingma and Sakya, Tsongkhapa, and the subsequent Gelugpa tradition, lay emphasis on a strict Prasangika interpretation of emptiness. It sees its own interpretation as the final truth on sunyata. The Nyingma and the Sakya school teach that emptiness goes further than a mere denial of inherently existing, with the Dzogchen tradition pointing to the nature of mind, Shentong, which is a further developed Yogacara Madhyamaka and influenced by Buddha nature teachings, and taught in Jonang and Kagyu. Topic. Strict emptiness, Gelugpa The Gelugpa school of Tibetan Buddhism is the most influential of the four Tibetan Buddhist schools. It was founded in the beginning of the 15th century by Tsongkhapa (1357–1419), who was strongly scholastic in orientation and encouraged the study of the great Indian masters of philosophy. The 14th Dalai Lama, who generally speaks from the Gelugpa version of the Madhyamaka Prasangika, states. According to the theory of emptiness, any belief in an objective reality grounded in the assumption of intrinsic, independent existence is simply untenable. All things and events, whether material, mental or even abstract concepts like time, are devoid of objective, independent existence. T. Hings and events are empty in that they can never possess any immutable essence, intrinsic reality or absolute being that affords independence. Topic. Nature of mind. Topic. Nyingma, Dzogchen 
In Dzogchen, emptiness does not refer to the mere negation of inherent existence, but to profound emptiness, the ground and nature of mind which is free from temporary characteristics. Bon The Tibetan Yungdrung Bon tradition regards the Ma Gyu, or Mother Tantra, as the highest tantra. Its views are close to Dzogchen. It sees waking life as an illusion, from which we have to wake up, just as we recognize dreams to be illusions. Sunyata is the lack of inherent existence. The Mother Tantra uses examples, similes and metaphors that we can ponder in order to better understand this illusory nature of both dream and waking life. These examples, similes and metaphors stress the lack of inherent existence and the unity of experience and experiencer. In the sutra teachings we call this emptiness, in tantra, illusion, and in zogchen, the single sphere. Topic. Sakya The Sakya school originated in the 11th century. It rose to power in the 13th century. Garampa Sanam Senj (1429–1489), an important philosopher in the Sakya school of Tibetan Buddhism, established an understandings of prasangika which differs from sankhapa. According to Garampa, emptiness is not just mere emptiness, the absence of inherent existence, but profound emptiness, the absence of the four extremes in phenomena. In Garampa's approach, ultimate truth is a liberating insight that is free from even grasping the mind. Topic: Shentong Buddha nature. Topic: Jonang. The Jonang school originated in the 12th century. Tsongkhapa strongly opposed the Jonang school, whose views he deemed to be dharmically incorrect. In the Tibetan Jonang school, only the Buddha and the Buddha nature are viewed as not intrinsically empty, but as truly real, unconditioned, and replete with eternal, changeless virtues. The Buddha nature is only empty of what is impermanent and conditioned, not of its own self. The Buddha nature is truly real, and primordially present in all beings. An important Tibetan treatise on emptiness and the Buddha nature is found in the scholar monk Dolpapa's voluminous study, Mountain Doctrine. Follows the format, inherited from India, of a presentation by way of both reasoning and scripture, the scriptural citations being so rich that the book can also be considered an inspiring anthology, a veritable treasure trove of literature about the matrix of one gone thus. In this vast mountain doctrine, Dalpopa describes the Buddha nature as N on material emptiness, emptiness that is far from an annihilatory emptiness, great emptiness that is the ultimate pristine wisdom of superiors. Buddha earlier than all Buddhas Causeless original Buddha. The Buddha nature is filled with eternal powers and virtues p. permanent, stable, eternal, everlasting. Not compounded by causes and conditions, the matrix of one gone thus is intrinsically endowed with ultimate Buddha qualities of body, speech, and mind such as the ten powers, it is not something that did not exist before and is newly produced, it is self-arisen. Dalpopa also cites the Angulimalaya Sutra's contrast between empty phenomena such as the moral and emotional afflictions kleshas, which are like ephemeral hailstones, and the enduring, eternal Buddha, which is like a precious gem. Empty phenomena are other different, non-empty phenomena are other different. The tens of millions of afflictive emotions like hailstones are empty. The phenomena in the class of non-virtues, like hailstones, quickly disintegrate. Buddha, like a Vedriya jewel, is permanent. The liberation of a Buddha also is form. Do not make a discrimination of non-division, saying, The character of liberation is empty. <laughs> Kagyu The Kagyu teacher Kenpo Sultram, in progressive stages of meditation on emptiness, presents five stages of meditation, which he relates to five different schools or approaches. Sravaka meditation on non-self, meditation on the emptiness of the skandhas and the non-existence of a personal self. Chitamatra approach, meditation on the mind stream, the ever-continuing process of perception, and the non-duality of perceived and perceiver. Svatantrika Madhyamaka approach, meditation on all dhammas, which are empty of self-nature, and the negation of any substance. 
Prasangika Madhamaka approach, meditation on the non-conceptual nature of both the appearance of phenomena and their self-emptiness. In this approach, all concepts are to be abandoned. Shentong Madhyamaka, meditation on Paramathasatya, absolute reality, Buddhajnana, which is beyond concepts, and described by terms as truly existing. This approach helps to overcome certain residual subtle concepts and the habit, fostered on the earlier stages of the path, of negating whatever experience arises in his, her mind. It destroys false concepts, as does prasangika, but it also alerts the practitioner to the presence of a dynamic, positive reality that is to be experienced once the conceptual mind is defeated. Topic. Chinese Buddhism When Buddhism was introduced in China it was understood in terms of its own culture. Various sects struggled to attain an understanding of the Indian texts. The Tathagatagarbha Sutras and the idea of the Buddha nature were endorsed, because of the perceived similarities with the Tao, which was understood as a transcendental reality underlying the world of appearances. Sunyata at first was also understood as pointing to transcendental reality. It took Chinese Buddhism several centuries to realize that sunyata does not refer to an essential transcendental reality underneath or behind the world of appearances. Topic. Chan The influence of those various doctrinal and textual backgrounds is still discernible in Zen. Zen teachers still mention the Buddha nature, but the Zen tradition also emphasizes that Buddha nature is sunyata, the absence of an independent and substantial self. Topic: <laughs> Western Buddhism. Various Western Buddhists note that sunyata refers to the emptiness of inherent existence, as in Madhyamaka, but also to the emptiness of mind or awareness, as open space and the ground of being. As in meditation oriented traditions and approaches such as Dzogchen and Shentong. Topic: <inaudible> Hinduism. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Influence on Advaita Vedanta. Gaudapada is considered by some scholars to have been strongly influenced by Buddhism, as he developed his concept of ajata. From Nagarjuna's Madhyamaka philosophy, which uses the term anatpada. An means not or non. Utpada means genesis, coming forth, birth, taken together. Anatpada means having no origin, not coming into existence, not taking effect, non production. According to Gaudapada, the Absolute is not subject to birth, change and death. The Absolute is Asia, the unborn eternal. The empirical world of appearances is considered Maya, unreal as it is transitory, and not absolutely existent. Thus, Gaudapada's concept of Ajitivada is similar to Buddhist term, Anatpada, for the absence of an origin or sunyata, but Gaudapada's perspective is quite different from Nagarjuna. Gaudapada's perspective found in Mandukya Karika is based on the Mandukya Upanishad. According to Gaudapada, the metaphysical absolute called Brahman never changes, while the phenomenal world changes continuously, so the phenomenal world cannot arise independently from Brahman. If the world cannot arise, yet as an empirical fact, then the perceived world has to be a transitory unreal appearance of Brahman. And if the phenomenal world is a transitory appearance, then there is no real origination or destruction, only apparent origination or destruction. From the level of ultimate truth the phenomenal world is maya, illusion, apparently existing but ultimately not metaphysically real. In Gaudapada Karika, chapter 3, verses 46-48, he states that Brahman never arises, is never born, is never unborn, it rests in itself. When the mind does not lie low, and is not again tossed about, then that being without movement, and not presenting any appearance, culminates into Brahman. Resting in itself, calm, with nirvana, indescribable, highest happiness, unborn and one with the unborn knowable, omniscient they say. No creature whatever is born, no origination of it exists or takes place. This is that highest truth where nothing whatever is born. 
In contrast to Renard's view, Karmarkar states the Ajitivada of Gaudapada has nothing in common with the sunyata concept in Buddhism. While the language of Gaudapada is undeniably similar to those found in Mahayana Buddhism, states Komans, their perspective is different because unlike Buddhism, Gaudapada is relying on the premise of Brahman, Atman or Turiya exist and are the nature of absolute reality. In Shaivism Sunya and sunyata sunya are concepts which appear in some Shaiva texts, such as the Vijnana Bhairava Tantra, which contains several verses mentioning voidness as a feature of ultimate reality, Shiva. The absolute void is Bhairava who is beyond the senses and the mind, beyond all the categories of these instruments. From the point of view of the human minutes, he is most void, from the point of view of reality, he is most full, for he is the source of all manifestation. The yogi should concentrate intensely on the idea and also feel that this universe is totally void. In that void, his mind would become absorbed. Then he becomes highly qualified for absorption i.e. his mind is absorbed in the absolute void In a series of Kannada language texts of Lingayatism, a Shaivism tradition, Shunya is equated to the concept of the Supreme. In particular, the Shunya Sampadane texts present the ideas of Allama Prabhu in a form of dialogue, where Shunya is that void and distinctions which a spiritual journey seeks to fill and eliminate. It is the described as a state of union of one soul with the infinite Shiva, the state of blissful moksha. In Vaishnavism Shunya Brahma is a concept found in certain texts of Vaishnavism, particularly in Odia, such as the poetic Panchasakas. It explains the Nirguna Brahman idea of Vedanta, that is the eternal unchanging metaphysical reality as personified void. Alternate names for this concept of Hinduism, include Shunya Purusha and Jagannatha Vishnu in certain texts. However, both in Lingayatism and various flavors of Vaishnavism such as Mahima Dharma, the idea of Shunya is closer to the Hindu concept of metaphysical Brahman, rather than to the Sunyata concept of Buddhism. However, there is some overlap, such as in the works of Bhima Bhoi, in the Vaishnavism of Orissa, the idea of Shunya Brahman or Shunya Purusha is found in the poetry of the Orison Panchasakas five friends, such as in the compositions of 16th century Asayutananda. Asayutananda's Shunya Samhita extols the nature of Shunya Brahman. Nahi Tahara Rupa Varna, Adarsha Avarna Ta China, Tahaku Brahma Boli Kahi, Sunya Brahmati Se Balai. It has no shape, no color. It is invisible and without a name. This Brahman is called Shunya Brahman. The Panchazakas practiced a form of bhakti called Jnana Mishrita Bhakti Marga, which saw the necessity of knowledge and devotion. Bhakti. Topic. Alternate translations Emptiness Interdependence Ringu Tulku Openness Transparency Cohen. Spaciousness Thusness Topic. See also Topic. Notes Topic References Topic Sources Topic Primary Topic External Links Zach Dorfman, Toward a Buddhist Politics of Freedom, The Montreal Review, September twenty eleven.